Well, there are very few moments when you see the majestic universe unravel in front of your eyes and in fact there are very few moments actually the human race could, uh, could actually witness and in fact today I am uh, sitting with a person who has been in the astrophysics, uh, studying astrophysics for a very long time, for over 40 years and in fact today we are here to talk about the lunar eclipse which will happen on the 5th of May. Uh, I have with me Professor Patrick Das Gupta. He's a professor, he's a scholar in the field and in fact uh, he's a professor right now at Delhi University. So thank you Namaskar, so much. Mr. Yash. Thank you so much for speaking with CNN News 18, sir. So for uh, astrophysics is a very complex subject if you look at it in terms of a layman who doesn't understand physics that much. Tomorrow is a lunar eclipse and it's said to be a significant one. Can you throw some light on it, sir? Uh, sure. So, uh, you know, lunar eclipse will always fall on the full moon day. That is Purnima, not all Purnimas are lunar eclipse, lunar eclipse days, but some Purnimas would be lunar eclipse days. The reason is that lunar eclipse happens because moon comes in between, moon rather earth comes in between sun and moon. All right, And therefore, earth casts a shadow on the moon and Purnima also happens because moon is in a moon, earth and sun are in a straight line so that the moon's face that is facing earth it gets the full sunlight and that's the reason why you see the full silvered circular disk of the moon which we call full moon or Purnima and some of the full moon nights also happen to be lunar eclipse nights. The reason is that the plane of the orbit of moon going around the earth, that plane is inclined by about 5 degree with respect to the plane in which earth goes around sun. Yes. Of course, moon is also going around mm -hmm. earth and earth is going around the sun the plane in which earth goes around the sun and the plane in which moon goes around earth, these two planes are having an angle of 5 degree. And only when that intersection happens that moon is exactly behind earth, earth is in between sun and moon, you get lunar eclipse. On the other hand, solar eclipse happens when moon comes in between sun and the earth. That means solar eclipse will happen on new moon days, new moon means Amavasya. Not all Amavasyas or new moon are solar eclipse days, but again because of this difference in the angle between the two planes, some of the Amavasya days are solar eclipse, eclipse days. This fact that there is an inclination, there is an angle between the two planes, this fact, first time, the first Indian astronomer and mathematician who understood it and gave the theory is the great Aryabhatta, who lived during the Gupta period, who, who uh, was probably born around 470 AD. Uh, the only other person who knew uh, the mechanism of all the eclipses, solar or lunar eclipse, was slightly before Aryabhatta, was a Greek uh, astronomer, Hipparchus. So Hipparchus first and then Aryabhatta. They were the first people to understand why lunar and solar eclipses take place because of this two different orbital planes. And uh, Clearly, these celestial phenomena are physical phenomena which happens because of earth going around sun, held by sun's pull, gravitational pull, earth is going around uh, sun, moon is lighter and moon is held by the gravitational pull, pull of earth. And so, therefore, this astrophysical dynamics is what causes both lunar eclipse and solar eclipse. So tomorrow we have a 
penumbral lunar eclipse. Remember, it's coming exactly almost 15 days after one of the hybrid solar eclipses that took place on April 20th or so. But I think that wasn't visible in India, right? Yes, it was not. Uh, uh, because Earth is much bigger than the Moon mm -hmm. and therefore the shadow cast by Earth is bigger. So lunar eclipses have a bigger uh, view mm -hmm. as far as regions on the world is concerned. Lunar eclipse can be seen by many regions. Mm -hmm. While solar eclipse, as I said, it happens because moon comes between sun and earth and moon's size is smaller. So therefore, solar eclipses are total solar eclipses. Only few regions can um, observe, partial many can observe. So therefore, and uh, 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 so therefore, we will um, see this 15 days gap between the solar eclipses and lunar eclipses is obvious because moon roughly takes 15 days from from between sun and earth to come to the opposite when where earth comes between moon and earth so, so basically in terms of you very beautifully explained the entire process about the lunar eclipses solar eclipses and how this phenomenon occurs and it's also very it's important for the people also to understand all these things so one very important fact like when we talk about physics as a subject or uh, in terms of when we do research what data can we get in terms of what what what, what we can actually gather in terms of data from this thing which could actually uh, help this very study correct so we all know that moon is not a perfect sphere it has craters and that means there are pockmarked regions because meteors, when uh, meteors crash onto the surface of the moon, they throw up a lot of lunar dust and they create craters. Mm -hmm. And moon, the surface of the moon is littered with several such craters. And during the eclipses, whether it is a solar eclipse or lunar eclipse, you can study the topography of the lunar surface because uh, when uh, you watch an umbral lunar eclipse, this tomorrow is going to be penumbral mm -hmm. because the shadow is not perfect because sun is a big object, light from the sun is coming from different direction and therefore Earth, which is obstructing the radiation, only if the moon is exactly aligned with the centers of sun and uh, earth, then the total light will be obstructed at some position. That's called the umbral uh, lunar eclipse. But here, in tomorrow's case, it's not exactly aligned. So only the shadow will not be that dark. So moon will more or less be visible except that it will be dimmer. dimmer. And if it is dimmer, if it is not uh, very bright, then you can study the topography of the moon. The other thing which can be studied, for example, one might uh, ask, during, a, during an umbral lunar eclipse, the moon at that point doesn't disappear. So when the eclipse pro proceeds, you see that moon is getting eaten. Mm -hmm. That part is very sharp. But when moon comes exactly behind sun and earth, this line, the moon doesn't look completely dark. It is reddish in color. Okay. That's because the radiation from the earth has an atmosphere. And the radiation from the sun, part of the radiation is going through the atmosphere. And when they go through the atmosphere, they get refracted. Just like a prism, when sun's radiation, white light passes, it, due to refraction, the, there's a dispersion of light. The wavelengths 
wavelengths they separate out. So red, that's the vibgior. Violet, indigo, that's vibgior we learn. And it is that refracted red light due to the dispersion of light which falls on the moon when moon is exactly aligned with the centers of sun and earth. And that's the reason why moon looks reddish. In penumbral, you will not see that because it's not exactly coming in. And uh, there will be some effect of dispersion of light, but it will be not as dramatic as it happens in a total lunar eclipse, umbral lunar eclipse. So these things, how the light is getting refracted and dispersed through atmosphere, these can be also studied. By so, so basically, I also read it somewhere, sir, uh, this, my, this same phenomenon now will take place after two decades. I read it somewhere that uh, this phenomenon is not very regular when term, in terms of uh, occurrence. So when we talk about such phenomena, like for general people to understand, we also talk about astrology in these matters. Yeah, I know, but still people believe it. People talk about astronomy. So to those like who want to know the significance of this thing, in very few words, how would, we, how would you sum up this event as a scientist as, or as someone who has been into this field? So, uh, we as scientists, we know that everything is physical mm. and all the laws of physics, they only determine these phenomena. Astrology is a belief system where uh, the astrologers believe that the position of sun, moon, other planets, stars, they decide the fate of human beings. It's a belief system and most of the scientists do not subscribe to this belief system. The reason is that the stars, moon, sun, their force fields are so tiny that they cannot have, because in science everything is causal and a body will affect me if there is a cause that propagates to me and affects me. The gravitational tidal pull of moon is insignificant on human beings. The force fields are so insignificant, although moon is the nearest celestial object. Moon being the nearest celestial object, yet its force field, whether the tidal force or actual gravity on human beings is insignificant. Forget uh, other stars or other planets which are much, much, much further away. So therefore, uh, and there is also another thing why uh, many scientists believe that astrology cannot be correct because we human beings, we have a free will. We are not deterministic systems. We are not like a, an AC or a refrigerator where if you switch off, it turns off. We have a free will. If I want to decide that today in the evening I will put in lot of work in my research work, but suddenly I might decide, no, 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 I think I have been doing lot of work. Today, maybe I should go out and uh, go for a physical exercise, brisk walk in the university gardens and have that free will to suddenly change my decision. Mm -hmm. And many of our decisions, they affect our fate. And hence, if stars, planets, they were to decide our fate, that means human beings don't have any free will. And uh, which negates the very basic uh, trait of human being and their mental processes where we have the power to change our decision, the so-called free will. And uh, that comes into conflict with the belief system of astrology or palmistry or whatever, you know, tarot reading or anything of that kind. Professor, thank you so much for explaining to us each and every aspect of it. Uh, 
I actually I was I'm no subject matter expert, but after listening this thing, I can make a few things out of it, and uh, so I hope as our audience. And thank you so much. No, no, uh, most welcome. It was my pleasure. To CNN it's my pleasure. This is Yash Goel with video journalist P K Das for CNN News 18.